and can cleanse the mother of the evil which her children have given unto her. The Lemurian race practically destroyed itself, owing to its misuse of the sacral center, which was at that time the most active and the dominant center. In Atlantean days it was the solar plexus center which was the prime objective of the entering fire. The work of the hierarchy in Lemurian days was, as I have told you elsewhere, to teach infant humanity the nature, meaning and significance of the physical vehicle, just as in the next grade. The emotional was fostered in the major object of attention, and in our race, it is the mind which is subjected to stimulation. The initiate in Lemurian times was one who had completely mastered the control of the body, and Papa Yoga was then the outstanding spiritual practice. This, in time, was superseded by Laya Yoga, which brought all the centers in the etheric body, except the throat and head centers, into functioning activity. This is not the type of activity which is now possible, because it must be remembered that the master in those days had not the development or the understanding of the masters of today, the only exceptions being those who had come from other schemes and spheres to aid animal man and primitive humanity. A. Venereal and syphilitic diseases Paralleling all the activity of the Great White Lodge, as was always the case and is the case today, was the activity of the Dark Forces. Their effects had to be brought about through the Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucas Trust 137 A Treatise on the Seven Rays, Volume 4, Esoteric Healing medium of the sacral center, and thus a most vicious situation came about which weakened the stamina of the human body, which greatly increased the demands of the sex nature through the stimulation of the sacral center, artificially brought about by the Black Lodge, and which produced many unholy alliances and widespread evil relations. A great new law of nature was then imposed by the planetary logos which has been expressed very inadequately by the words, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. This law could be better expressed by saying, he that misuses that which he has built will see it fall from forces within itself. As the centuries slipped away and the Lemurian race submitted to the evil impulses of the animal nature, gradually the earliest type of venereal disease made its appearance, eventually the entire race was riddled with it and died out, nature taking its toll and exacting its inexorable price. You might here ask how these early inhabitants of our planet could be held responsible for there is no sin where there is no sense of responsibility and no consciousness of wrongdoing. B. Hierarchy in those days had its own methods of teaching these infant peoples, just as the smallest child can be taught today to refrain from certain physical habits. Humanity then knew well what was evil, because the evidences of that evil were physically apparent and quite easily perceived. The penalty was obvious and the results immediate. The teachers of the race saw to it that cause and effect were quickly to be noted. At this time there also arose the first tendencies to marriage, as differentiated from promiscuity, the formation of family units became the subject of attention and a goal for the most highly evolved. This was one of the first tasks undertaken by the hierarchy and the first effort toward any form of group activity, conveying the first lesson in responsibility.
The family unit was not stable as it can be now, but even its relatively brief tenure was a tremendous step forward. The segregation of the family unit and the growth of the sense of responsibility has gone steadily forward until it has culminated in our present system of marriage and our stress in the Occident upon monogamy. It has led to the Western pride in family strains and pedigrees, our interest in genealogies and relationships, and the complete horror of the Occidental thinker over the syphilitic diseases as they affect families and their offspring. Two most interesting things are, however, happening today. The family unit, on a worldwide scale, is being broken up, owing to the fortunes of war and, on a smaller scale, owing to the more modern views concerning marriage and divorce. Secondly, definite and rapid cures for the sexual diseases are being discovered, and these may tend to make people more reckless. When, however, they are perfected, they will in the long run safeguard the race and will return bodies to the soil after death free from the plague which has contaminated the earth for endless ages. There will thus be brought about a gradual purifying of the soil. The growth of the practice of cremation will also aid this process of purification. Destruction by fire and the intensity of the heat engendered by applied military methods are also helping, and during the next one million. Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucas Trust 138 a Treatise on the Seven Rays, Volume 4, Esoteric Healing. Years we shall see syphilis, inherited from Lemuria, stamped out, both in the human family and in the soil of the planet. As the ages passed away, humanity entered into the Atlantean stage of development. The conscious control of the physical body dropped below the threshold of consciousness. The etheric body became consequently more potent, a fact not oft considered, and the physical body reacted increasingly like an automaton to the impression and the direction of a steadily developing desire nature. Desire became something more than simply response to animal physical urges and to the primitive instincts, but was directed to objects and objectives extraneous to the body, towards material possessions and towards that which when seen and coveted could be appropriated. Just as the major sins of Lemurian times, if they could be called sins in any true sense, because of the low intelligence of the race were through the misuse of sex, so the major sin of the Atlantean people was theft, widespread in general. The seeds of aggression and of personal acquisitiveness began to show themselves, culminating in the Great War, as related in the secret doctrine between the Lords of the Shining Countenance and the Lords of the Dark Face. To procure what they coveted and felt they needed, the most highly evolved of that race began to practice magic. It is not possible for me to outline to you the nature and practices of Atlantean magic with its control of elementals and of forms of life which have now been driven back into retreat and are inacceptable to humanity. Neither can I indicate to you the particular methods used to acquire what was desired, the words of power employed and the carefully planned rituals which were followed by those who sought to enrich themselves and to take what they wanted, no matter what the cost to others. This magical work was the misdirected travesty of the white magic so openly used in those days prior to the great war between the forces of light and the forces of evil. Magic of the right kind was very familiar to the Atlantean people, and was used by those members of the hierarchy who were entrusted with the guidance of the race and who were combating rampant evil in high places. 
That same evil is again upon the warpath and is being fought by the men of goodwill, under the direction of the Great White Lodge. Faith of luxury we reached in Atlantis of this week, with all our boasted civilization, know nothing and have never achieved. Some faint traces of it have come to us from legends and from ancient Egypt, from archaeological discovery and old fairy tales. There was a recurrence of pure Atlantean mischief and wickedness in the decadent days of the Roman Empire. Life became tainted by the miasma of unadulterated selfishness and the very springs of life itself became polluted. Men only lived in dreams in order to be in possession of the utmost luxury and of a very plethora of things and of material goods. They were smothered by desire and plagued by the dream of never dying but of living on and on, acquiring more and more of all that they desired. P. Tuberculosis It is in this situation that we find the origin of tuberculosis. It originated in the organs whereby men breathe and live, and was imposed, as a penalty, by the Great White Lodge. The masters promulgated a new law for the Atlantean people when Lemurian vice and Atlantean cupidity. Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucas Trust 139 A Treatise on the Seven Rays Volume 4 Esoteric Healing were at their most ruthless height. This law can be translated into the following terms. He who lives only for material goods, who sacrifices all virtue in order to gain that which cannot last, will die in life, will find breath failing him, and yet will refuse to think of death until the summons comes. It is difficult for us in these days to appreciate or to comprehend the Atlantean state of consciousness. There was no mental process whatsoever except among the leaders of the race, there was only rampant, ruthless, insatiable desire. This action of the Great White Lodge forced two issues and confronted the race with two hitherto unrealized problems. The first was that psychological attitudes and states of consciousness can and do bring about physiological conditions, these being both good and bad. Secondly, for the first time the people faced with recognition the phenomenon of death, death which they themselves brought about in a new way and not just by physical means. This had to be dramatized for them in some definitely objective manner, for as yet the masses did not respond to verbal teaching but only to visual events. When, therefore, they saw a particularly predatory and rapacious person begin to suffer from a dire disease which seemed to arise from within himself and, whilst suffering, hold on to his love of life, as tubercular people do today they were faced with another aspect or form of the original law imposed in Lemurian times which said, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Death had hitherto been accepted without questioning as the fate of all living things, but now, for the first time, mental relationship between individual action and death was recognized, as yet in a dim and feeble way, and a great step forward was made in the human consciousness. Instinct failed to handle this situation. Death, brother of mine, is a great and universal heritage. All forms die, for such is the law of life, to speak in paradoxes. The time had arrived when the race could be taught the lesson that death can either be the ending of a cycle and an automatic response to the great law of cycles which continually institutes the new and ends the old, or it can be brought about by the misuse of the physical body, by misapplied energy and by the deliberate action of the man himself. 
The man who deliberately sinned and who is psycho-